Another thing that you can do that's going to help you get used to doing this, that's the first time I've done that in a while, but you should be, every time you play your sing, your scales, you should be singing it in your head or else out loud. So... <laughs> So, oh, you gotta find the the right pitch and then start. Oh, yeah. Oh, and that's really it. And then going down is always harder. And. Like I said, my singing is not perfect, but if I'm doing it on a live stream in front of all my fans and friends, I mean, you can definitely do it too. So shut up and just fucking do it, man. It's going to help. I guarantee it. Um, used to go to the park and do this. Singing my band was embarrassing, but helps both pitch, phrasing, and also stage fright. James is, once again, dead on. I mean, that is it's so true. You know, it doesn't – got to be able to – understand that if you're going to be practicing and you're going to try to get better, you're going to fail. You're going to make mess ups. You're going to sound stupid. And it's just going to happen. That is like a key thing in improvising. So I have times where I'm on stage and, you know, I'll hit a note that I don't like as much, but I'll make it work. Um, You know, you can always add in chromaticism, make it sound cool or add in that blues note and just do it. I mean, you don't have to be perfect with your scales. You should know them really well if you want to do interconnecting things. But other than that, it really comes down to if you have a good ear, you're going to be awesome. I mean, you just will. There's tons of players out there that don't know anything about scales and are amazing. And I mean, like, crazy good. Um, what is harder in your opinion, jazz, improv, or metal? Definitely jazz. Jazz is... I try to make my metal improvising, though, very similar to what I do in jazz. And what I mean by that is I do a lot of chord changing for my solos, for outlining the individual chords. So even if you have diatonic chords, for instance, if I'm in the D major 7, and then I do, um, I can't even think right now, E minor 7, they're diatonic. thing is I could play E major over that or sorry D major over that all day or E minor over that all day long whatever and it's going to sound fine so just like that and then you go to the the E7 my E minor 7 clearly the same scale but you'll notice the way that I play them they don't sound like the same chord even when I'm not playing a chord under them and the reason for that is is knowing your arpeggios and knowing how to apply them and having that ear like I said the just the mindset of okay I'm in this key now I'm jumping to this one so if I'm playing over this like that you can hear the key changes and like I said they're diatonic but I'm still outlining them with the individual chord arpeggio and scale because I want to make sure that people hear that chord change without having to hear the chord change and that does take some anticipation it takes some practice and you need to get used to like catching rhythms and hearing them out in your head (laughs) wrong notes you mean jazz accidentally turned purposeful (laughs) Hi, uh, Heidi. I don't know how to say your name. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so you can... I don't like saying that when you mess up, you turn it professional. What I mean is if you make a bad note, like while trying to find the good one, <clears throat> just work it in. Make it work. Um, that's what improv's all about. And more than likely, you're going to be doing this in your house for hundreds of hours before you actually do it on the stage if, you know, you think it through and... That's what I do. That's what 
I did for a long time. I just practiced in my room, you know, doing it over and over all alone. And then I got good, and now I do it on stage all the time, and I love it. It's, it seriously is more fun than playing written out solos for me. That's why I have it in every single song. I have an improv part that I enjoy, you know, just going off on live or something. You can even ask Elijah. I don't know if he's still in this this board or whatever, but he knows I do that all the time, and it's fun. But just knowing to change with the chords, that kind of comes with, like, you know, repetition and doing it a bunch of times, things like that, I guess. Um, hey, Cody, David, Julian, all you guys joining? Thanks for coming. In those chord changes, do you focus on any modulation chords and or second five, oh, two, five, one groups? I'm just thinking in terms of music theory. <sighs> um, yeah, I think of the modes, but I rather, okay, th I get this kind of questions, these kind of questions a lot. So I know a lot of theory, yes, but I don't know it as well without my guitar. And a lot of people say that's horrible, but I really don't think it is because I don't ever really talk music theory without my guitar in my hand or else thinking about it. And the reason for that is I didn't want to learn music theory just reading out of a book, being taught it in a class. I thought that was just like, I thought that was stupid and boring. So I learned how to do this kind of stuff on a guitar so I could apply it the day I learned it and know what it sounds like without being told this has a happy sound. It's like, well, maybe it has a happy sound to you, but that doesn't mean it has a happy sound to me. So I think that, like, for what I'm referring to when I'm saying happy sound is, like, major. And, yes, that does have a resolving happy type sound. But what I'm talking about is, like, when you do major sevens, like, that doesn't sound happy to me. That It just sounds kind of like, you know, like you're going with it. Um, so... That's kind of why I taught myself on guitar. So I don't really think of them like you're saying with um, three five ones or two five ones. Uh, you can do that, but I wouldn't really recommend it unless that's just something you're wanting to do for composing reasons and things like that. Which, if that is the case, then it is good to know. But I wouldn't stress too much about it. If you know how to play it on guitar, then, I mean, you're ahead of the game already. I hope that answers your question, Aaron. Um, hey, Andrew's here. Um, let's see. So, back to what I was saying. I mean, I'm pretty much out of time now, but what I'm saying is improvise. If you take anything away from today, improvise by going out in public or in your room or wherever you want to and just play random notes, whatever. Just get used to hearing bad notes because it's going to happen. It's going to happen no matter where you are, on stage, in your house, in front of your friends, in front of your parents, in front of your girlfriend, trying to show off for someone. doesn't matter. It's going to happen. Um, I just started recently learning. Yeah, no problem. I'm always happy to do these lessons. I hope they help you guys. I mean, I really don't know, but I'm hoping they do. These are a lot of things that I wish I were told earlier on or else, you know, I just had to figure out over time. But... Yeah, no problem, Aaron. I hope I really hope that helped, though. Did that kind of help or not really answer your question? Just let me know. Um, I got an idea for the next live video. Talk about live shows, experience, preparation. That's a good idea, Anthony. That's a, I actually kind of like that. All my notes are... All my songs are bad notes. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there are bands that do that on purpose. I mean, like the... One band that does it really well, though, is kind of like Viljarta. They do a lot of atonal stuff, but they don't always do atonal things, but a lot of times they do, and they make it those nasty sounds sound really cool. Um, anyway, like I said, take away anything. Just go somewhere, try and practice, play a bunch of notes, get them wrong, who cares? Learn your scales, learn your arpeggios. Find some good chords to practice doing this over. Turn on a drum machine or a metronome if you like those. Um, and just play with it. And if you have a friend that will come over and jam with you, that's even better. Uh, just have them play these two chords going back and forth between the two. Um, and hopefully that that teaches you how to get it in your ear. And you'll eventually, if you sit there playing that same fucking thing for two hours, 
and you don't have that in your head yet, and you're trying to play improv over it, then you got to... I don't know, you got something wrong with you. It'll get stuck in your head, and you'll start changing with the chord without even thinking about it. And I know how weird that sounds and how unlikely it sounds, but it's really true. So just give this stuff a try, and, you know, let me know what you guys want to see next. I'm going to be uploading all of my videos that I do on here up to YouTube, if you missed any of my other ones already. Um, my YouTube account is just, uh, you can just Google me, say Dylan for YouTube. Uh, it should be 123D Fur is my channel name, I think. And I'm going to be opening a new account for something called Patreon. And I'm hoping to be able to do more of these, longer ones of these, with more insight for people that actually want to contribute and really do care about what they see me talk about. So I will be posting about that pretty soon here. Um, I just need to record an intro video so I can introduce myself to everyone and kind of properly talk about it. But anyway, I hope this helps some of you guys, and if not, then give me a message, and maybe I can help you out that way. I'm more than happy to spend some time talking to you guys. Yeah, I, I really hope I can, Anthony, because I'm trying to make this, I want to make this full-time. I want to help everyone out I, I possibly can, and the only thing is I just don't make enough money right now doing it, and it sucks, but I mean, I still love to do it. That's why I'm doing it still. <laughs> But hopefully we can, I can make something work and we can get to a point that I can do these every, every single day, you know. I mean, that'd be amazing. And I could do it exactly what you guys want to talk about. Every single person that asks for something, they get a direct answer back. And just things like that along with merch and music and all that other great stuff guaranteed. But I'll talk more about that, you know, later on in a post or something. So just be sure to follow me and... Once again, thanks for tuning in. Check out the stuff on YouTube if you haven't already. And go try some stuff. Sound horrible. How about that for a last line?